Hi, I'm Eric. I'm excited to talk to you about the future of wearables and the potential they have to help in the fight against COVID-19, to detect illness, and to alert you about serious chronic conditions. In January this year, Scripps published the results of a study that showed how data from Fitbit devices significantly improved influenza-like illness outbreak predictions. This type of information can improve flu surveillance and can be vital for public health officials to respond quickly to flu outbreaks. Unfortunately, that research was timelier than anticipated, with the emergence of COVID-19 just weeks later. In response to COVID-19, we've accelerated our work on respiratory disease and moved from looking at disease at a population level to focus on individual illness detection. Today, we're working to help develop a means to screen for COVID-19 before symptoms start. We're looking at this in combination with leading research institutions, Scripps, Stanford, and several organizations globally, including Sydney University, King's College London, and the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Our goal is to be able to alert people that they may be sick before they notice symptoms so they can isolate and get tested, helping to stop the spread of the virus. I'd like to introduce Dr. Mike Snyder from Stanford Innovation Lab to talk more about the role we hope wearables can play in COVID detection and the great work his team is doing. Thanks, Eric. It's really great to be here. I'm looking forward to telling you what we're up to at the Stanford Healthcare Innovation Lab with wearables and detecting infectious disease, especially as it relates to COVID-19. So we're in the middle of a pandemic, obviously, and what you really want to be doing ideally is testing everybody every day. So the challenge with COVID is that there's a lot of people running around who are asymptomatic, and also there's often a long pre-symptomatic period prior to when people start feeling signs of illness. And so what we really want to do is try and detect people as early as possible. And right now, the current test is PCR, and there's several problems with that. One is it takes several days before people actually become positive by PCR. So from the time of infection to the time they're positive, it can take a few days. Uh, and the second is it's actually expensive and it's not really scalable. You can test people several times a week, but you can't test people every day all the time across millions of people. It's just not really practical. You may know 60% of the world has a smartphone. And if you pair that with a smartwatch, you could actually have a health sensor for 60% 60, 60 of the planet. So we think wearables are really powerful because they're able to make ma many kinds of measurements. They'll measure resting heart rate, heart rate variability, uh, respiration rate, all kinds of signals. And all of these are signs of your health. And so right now we've been very focused on resting heart rate. So we can build, we can see people's normal resting heart rate distribution. And then we can see when it jumps up too high. And we've been training, working with Fitbit. We've actually been working hard to figure out, you know, when people are showing signs of illness at the first possible time. And so the way we do this is actually we're running a two-part study. The first part is just to see if we can detect COVID-19 with a smartwatch and we're partnering with Fitbit to do this. So what we do is we develop algorithms using machine learning and other ways for following people's what their normal healthy signal is. And then we look for abnormalities from that baseline, basically. We know their healthy baseline and we look for these jump ups in signal, these ab aberrations that are basically saying you're getting ill. So we think we can follow people quite early and that will be very powerful. So they're not spreading the illness all around. If we can send them a signal, we tell them to stay home. So they're not uh, basically spreading the disease all around to their family, to their friends, to their coworkers. Uh, we think the devices in general be super powerful for all kinds of illnesses. In fact, we got into this because we were trying to detect other respiratory illnesses as well. And we showed we could do that, including some asymptomatic cases. So we think these devices will be very, very powerful for monitoring people's health and actually also telling health outcomes. So if you think about some of these cases like chronic fatigue and things, it's very, very hard to tell if anyone's getting better. Uh, but if you can actually treat people and have some sort of quantitative measure for how they're getting better, uh, that will be very, very powerful. And we think smartwatches will be super good for that. Thank you, Dr. Snyder. As you just heard, we believe wearables can play an important role in early detection of infectious disease, which is critical to slowing the spread of COVID-19. Building on the research we're doing with Scripps and Stanford, we launched a study to users in the US and Canada to try and build an algorithm that detects potential signs of COVID-19. In one of the most extensive studies to date, 
we've enrolled 100,000 Fitbit users, of which more than 900 have reported a diagnosis of COVID-19 as confirmed by a clinical test. As an aside, it is really rewarding to see so many members of the Fitbit community sign up to share their data with us to further the collective fight against COVID-19, and I really thank them. I'm incredibly excited by our results. We submitted this early data for a peer review publication, and we're working to bring the algorithm to market as quickly as possible. We have been using machine learning to look across a number of metrics that are collected by Fitbit devices. Strong signals come from several metrics, breathing rate, which is the rate at which people breathe when they are sleeping, resting heart rate, which is your heart rate right before you wake up in the morning, and heart rate variability at rest, which is the beat-to-beat -beat variation in your heart while you're sleeping. Here's a snapshot of how these metrics signal something is wrong as COVID progresses through their body. As you can see across all metrics, we see signal about a week prior to the start of symptoms. Heart rate variability hits its lowest point or its worst around day one of symptoms. With heart rate, we don't see that normalize again on average until at least five to seven days after the start of symptoms. For breathing rate, we saw a peak around day two of symptoms there's a slight elevation for up to three weeks afterwards. The takeaway from these is that it's possible to know nearly a week before symptoms that you could be falling ill. Advanced warnings means that you can isolate and help stop the spread of this virus. In all screening systems, one always trades off the risk of accidentally telling somebody that they are sick when they are not, which is a false positive, versus telling somebody that they are well when they are not, which is a false negative. The technical term for these factors are sensitivity, the ability to correctly identify people who are sick, and specificity, the ability to identify people who are healthy. Based on the findings of our study, we can detect nearly 50% of COVID-19 cases a day before the onset of symptoms with 70% specificity. As researchers, we're always working to find the balance between sensitivity and specificity, as there are trade-offs to both. We will work with the clinical community and public health community to determine how to strike the right balance between the two. As you can see, our bodies start to fight the disease before more visible symptoms appear, and we believe Fitbit can reliably detect these signals, giving us an incredible opportunity to get ahead of the virus and help alert people that they could be sick before they unknowingly spread it to others. We also observe findings in our study that echo what we've seen from public health officials, helping us to understand who is more likely to be sick some of the most common symptoms, and how long the illness lasted for most people. For example, being older, male, or having a high BMI increases the likelihood of severe outcomes. The most commonly reported symptom in our study was fatigue, present in 72% of subjects, followed by headache with 65%, body aches with 63%, a decrease in taste and smell with 60%, and cough 59%. In fact, fever was present in just 55% of study participants with COVID-19. Mild cases show a median duration of nine days, while moderate cases have a median duration of 16. And for those requiring hospitalization, the length has been found to be 24 days with a large spread. And yet there were several cases with a period of more than two months. While this research shows great promise to help us understand and detect COVID-19, it can also serve as a model for detecting other disease and health conditions in the future. There are lots of things we can measure in the human body that provide invisible signals. We talked about breathing rate, resting heart rate, and heart rate variability, but there are others like SpO2, how much oxygen in your blood, skin temperature, and how your sleep is structured. These measures have the potential to act as an early warning system that something could be wrong. So sleep is where the body repairs itself. So being able to capture data from these metrics at night is critical. Understanding trends in your metrics is powerful. For example, you know, breathing rate is linked to good cardiovascular health. Increases in your breathing rate trends can indicate the body is under stress. HRV plays an important role in many aspects of our health and well-being. The biggest nerve in the human body is linked directly to our heart, providing a window into our central nervous system. If you continually notice low SpO2 using a regulated device, it could be a potential indication of acute illness like COVID-19 or a chronic condition like sleep apnea or COPD. Understanding your trends can help uncover potential changes in your health. 
At Fitbit, we're exploring how those metrics can lead to early detection or help understand disease progression. While there's obviously a lot of interest right now in infectious disease, equally of interest to us and our users are chronic diseases like diabetes and depression. If we can continually screen for the onset of a disease and can notify users early, the medical system can come and help reverse or at least manage that disease and potentially avoid other comorbidities. Ultimately, we hope we can enable our users to lead happier, healthier lives. The future of wearables and Fitbit is helping people navigate their health in a complete way. And safe to say, we're just getting started.